Modern Family may have ended back in 2020, but we are still not over it. And we know that many miss Phil, Jade, Gloria, Cam, and the rest of the gang more than our actual families. And that's why, in this video, we are going to go over 25 things or so that you might have missed in Modern Family, which, seeing as it's over a decade old, is not that modern anymore. Leading off, seeing as we watched them all grow up on screen, it's hard to remember that most of the cast started off as kids, especially Lily, who was adopted by Cam and Mitch in the first episode. During her baby years, Cam wanted to live through his daughter and introduce her to the world of showbiz, getting a gig on a commercial with another baby boy. However, the issue with the commercial was that it was horrifically racist. But that didn't stop it from being aired. Now, while we may have all forgotten about the commercial, the Modern Family team didn't. And if you look closely in the season two finale, you can see Lily's commercial being played on the TV in the background. While Modern Family admittedly has its share of continuity errors, there are a number of callbacks and recurring jokes, you know, like Jay's double-click fiasco. There's also moments of foreshadowing plot lines dispersed throughout the show's run. Take, for example, Season 3's Baby On Board, as Phil goes through his mail and names everything he sees, with everything connecting to later episodes. Phil says, here's a coupon for a gun range for mom. I don't know what that's about. Notice from the city to take down the treehouse or refine to $25 a day. Report card. Red light ticket from when me and Manny stole that. And, you know, as you know, it's later revealed that Claire secretly goes to the gun range to deal with stress. And Phil spent days building a treehouse for Luke, even though it was never approved by their HOA. Also, fun fact about recurring jokes. Ty Burrell apparently improvised the first slipping on the stairs as he goes up the stairs gag, and because of that, it soon became a recurring joke, with him constantly saying he needs to fix it. Also fun fact, the songs that Dylan sings are actually all improvised by actor Reed Ewing. The Connection Lost episode, or the 20-minute Apple commercial, is packed full of tiny details and hidden jokes that you might have missed the first time around. For example, one of the people that Claire has texted, Anne, is a writer on the show. Haley is Facebook friends with Zach Barbie, the boy who Haley had a crush on when their parents tried selling him their flipped project. The hidden message to Claire in Alex's essay when she writes in the middle of the paragraph, and I know you're not reading this, Mom. As well as references to Claire's old rival, city councillor Dwayne Bailey and actor Fred Savage, who guest starred and even directed several episodes. Another reference that appears in the Connection Lost episode, which warrants its very own entry, is the famous Croctopus 4. In the episode, a Yahoo ad for the cult classic movie can be seen on the screen, and it is, of course, the movie that's referenced multiple times in the show, and is the one that Phil and Claire wanted to see, but decided to go to an art house film instead to seem smart before Phil snuck in to see Croctopus. Okay, and another reference made in Connection Lost is to the crew who worked on Modern Family. As Claire goes on Facebook, we see a number of her friends, all of whom actually worked on the show. Well, except for Mitchell, he's a fictional character. Speaking of Mitchell, though, actor Jesse Tyler Ferguson grew the character's trademark beard as when he was cast as the role of Mitchell at age 33, he didn't think that he looked old enough to be a father, so he grew a beard to make him look more distinguished. As you know, Phil and his philosophies was wise beyond his years. Well, sometimes, but anyway, while he may not have been good at speaking without double entendres, the man was good at real estate, and he knew how to sell himself. How's that for a double entendre, huh? We have seen Phil brand all sorts of things throughout the show, like park benches and signs with his face on it, but they are not the only things. If you look closely, Phil has Phil Dumphy water bottles that he puts out at his open houses because you know how Phil likes to put out. Look at that, huh? Another double entendre. It's like I'm doing them on purpose or something. Now, if you're like me, you probably wondered if the various photos framed on the wall at the different houses were real or not. Well, you will be happy to learn that they were. The show actually used the younger cast's baby photos, which at the Dumphy residence were primarily featured by the staircase, and you can see baby photos of the kids like Ariel Winter hanging proudly on the wall. Also, if you look closely in the kitchen, you can see the heights of the kids marked on the wall. And this is something that Ariel Winter and Nolan Gould did for real, marking their heights every season. 
Like the wall by the stairs, the cork board in the Dumphy's home is also full of photos as well as calendars and letters. In fact, if you look closely at one of the letters, you'll actually be able to see the address of the Dumphy residence, which is apparently 2049 Oak Creek Drive, Cheviot Hills, California. However, that is not actually the address of the house used for the exterior shots, which, in case you were curious, is actually located at 10336 Dunlear Drive in Los Angeles, California. As you likely know, before he was Jay Pritchett in Modern Family, Ed O'Neill was best known as Al Bundy on the classic sitcom Married With Children. And there are actually photos from his Married With Children days hidden in the show. But there are also more direct Easter eggs and references to the sitcom that made him a household name. The episode where Jay gets glasses is a direct parody of a Married With Children episode, while the newspaper that Jay reads is the very same one that Al reads. While a lot of things changed throughout the show, the fact that the Dumpy kids rely on their parents is not one of them. That's why the opening of season 9 starts in exactly the same way as the pilot, with Claire calling out kids breakfast mirroring the very beginning. See, some things never change. Phil Dunphy is known for his humorous stories from his time in college, but one of them was actually kind of tragic. In one story, he talks about his friendship with his college buddy Ling, but then states that Ling actually died in a helicopter crash. This is referenced once again later on when the Dumphys are listening to Phil and Claire's old answering machine, and a message from Ling is played with him saying, Yo, it's me, Ling, and today is the day I fly my new helicopter, which could have been the last ever word said by Ling. Man, that's… that's pretty dark. This next entry is also a major callback, except this one spans an even greater amount of time. All the way back in Season 1, Phil and Luke are talking about the things that they would like to buy, and Phil mentions a robotic gutter cleaner, which is because, as we all know, Phil likes robots. However, this seemingly throwaway joke becomes a reality in Season 5, where he does indeed have a robotic gutter cleaner, the gutter done. However, the gutter done wasn't quite the dream Phil had hoped for, as it ended up killing a nest full of baby birds, mentally scarring him in the process. Continuing on the theme of fun callbacks, in the Season 2 episode, The One That Got Away, Gloria is seen sifting through a drawer in her kitchen. Now, at first glance, the objects just seem like random items that we all keep in our junk drawer, but on closer inspection, you may have noticed that these items hold a great level of significance. For instance, the Fruit Loop necklace as well as Baby Jesus, which were both referenced in previous episodes of the show. Now, most long-running sitcoms have to end up recasting a role, and Modern Family is no different, with a number of roles having to be recast. First up is the role of Lily, who was initially played by two twins, Jaden and Ella Hiller, but they ended up leaving the role before Aubrey Anderson Ammons was cast. Another role that was recast was that of the apple of Jay's eye, Stella. The role was played by the Frenchie Bridget in season 2 and 3 before being recast by another Frenchie beginning with B, Beatrice, who played the role for the rest of the show's run. Now, while it is never really addressed and often doesn't make a lot of sense, the show is a mockumentary, meaning that, for a reason we will address in the next entry, are being followed by cameras and interviewed. Who and why is never addressed on screen, but in one moment, we do actually see one of these cameramen in action. In the Season 1 episode, Run For Your Wife, a cameraman can be seen behind a bush as the kids walk down the driveway. Which, out of context? Yeah, that sounds really creepy. As we mentioned, there was originally a reason as to why the family is the subject of a documentary. That's because the documentary was supposed to be shot by a character called Geert Flurch. And for the record, yes, it's highly likely that I butchered that, but Geert is a Dutch filmmaker and former exchange student who once lived with the Pritchetts. However, this character was eventually scrapped, but the documentary style remained. One of the driving relationships in the show is that of Jay and Mitch, and although they don't always see eye to eye, they still love each other. In reality, Jesse Tyler Ferguson said that the relationship between Mitch and Jay was mirrored after his own relationship with his father. In an interview, he said, My dad is very supportive of me, but it's not the easiest thing for him to have a gay son. He continued saying that Jay's response is another true voice and a very genuine response for anyone with a gay child. 
As you know, Jay's main rival is his former business partner, Earl Chambers. And this rivalry ends up trickling down to their children after a misunderstanding between Claire and Cheryl. But this isn't actually the first time that we see Cheryl, or at least the actor who played her, Sarah Baker, in the show, with Baker having a cameo all the way back in season three, although it's unclear if she's playing Cheryl at that time. The goof in question comes in a newspaper clipping of an 11-year-old Cam talking about his alter ego Fizbo and how he wants to be a clown to entertain people. A pretty heartwarming story, no? But if you look outside Cam's article, you'll see that there is double printed text used as filler with the words, So Gruel got a second job over the holidays pushing merchandise at Nordstrom being seen on two spots on the page. Why does Cam look 20 in that picture and not 11? As the Dumphy house and the other houses are shot on a sound stage in LA and not in an actual location, it's understandable that some things about the house don't quite add up over time, such as the fact that the kitchen island randomly changes throughout the show's run, we never see the patio outside of the kitchen window, and there's a travel guide of LA, the place they live, on their coffee table in the living room. Speaking of furniture though, another fun fact, Alex's corkboard in her room doesn't change throughout the entire show's run. It's hard to imagine anyone else as the goofy, a charming man of many hobbies, Phil Dunphy, than Ty Burrell. With the cast all admitting that out of all of them, Ty Burrell is most like his character. But he was by no means the producer's first pick to play the part. In fact, one of the first actors to be offered the role was Joey himself, Matt LeBlanc. Apparently, LeBlanc was offered the role while the show was in pre-production, but after reading the script, he figured that the role was not for him, and he turned it down, instead playing himself in the underrated show episodes. Another actor to turn down the role was Rob Hubel, who apparently hated the script and told his agent to pass on the offer. However, Hubel came to regret the decision, as he ended up being a big fan of the show after watching it, and he did end up having a cameo in the show, as Phil's college rival, Glenn Whipple. Again, like Phil, it's hard to imagine anyone as Jay Pritchett other than Ed O'Neill, the family's grouchy yet soft patriarch and lover of Scotch and Stella. But also, like Phil, there were many other actors linked with the role. The one who came closest to getting the part was coach and Incredibles actor Craig T. Nelson, who was apparently offered the role only to turn it down after he felt disrespected by the pay on offer. So instead, the role went to Ed O'Neill, who managed to cash in pretty significantly on the role, as due to the show's long run, his contract just kept on getting bumped up. In fact, the reason the show came to a sudden, not so sudden end was because paying all of the major cast members for a 12th season would have basically bankrupted the network. Another role that is impossible to imagine anyone else playing but very nearly happened actually involves one of the main cast members. Before he got the role of Mitch, the producers actually wanted Jesse Tyler Ferguson to play the role of Cam and were trying to convince him to play the part. However, they eventually decided to give him the role of the much more uptight and neurotic Mitch, instead opting to go with Eric Stone Street as Cam, which, let's face it, was a much better choice. While they all play a dysfunctional yet tight family on the show, it's easy to forget that they actually have their own families outside of it, and sometimes these families have an effect on the show itself. For instance, in the pilot, Julie Bowen was actually pregnant, but seeing as that didn't work in the story, the production team had to cover it up. If you go back and watch the pilot, you'll probably notice that she's constantly being hidden behind laundry baskets, food products, and anything else that would make sense in terms of blocking, and now you know why. Now, when you think of Modern Family, you don't really think about stunts and actors doing them themselves but there was an instance where an actor's martial arts training came into good use. On the show, Jay showcases his Brazilian jiu-jitsu skills, even getting Mitchell in a rear naked choke. And that is likely a nod to Ed O'Neill's real life training. That's because Ed O'Neill is a jiu-jitsu black belt and trained at the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy in California, which is one of the most prestigious academies in the world, getting his black belt after 16 years of training. For anyone interested, there are videos of Ed O'Neill talking about his jiu-jitsu journey online, and even videos of him sparring. 
And finally, here's a little bonus for you. Did you know that Eleven herself had a cameo in Modern Family? Oh yeah, Millie Bobby Brown had a blink and you'll miss an appearance as Lizzie, a young girl whose bike gets stolen by Manny in the episode Closet? You'll love it, back in season six. Does that make anyone else feel really, really old? 